imagine yourself standing on an eroding grassy hill, looking across a desolate landscape of rocky gullies. Shielding your eyes from the hot Montana sun, you swipe away at the sweat slowly dripping down the side of your face as you reach down into the dirt. And suddenly, your fingers touch a hard object. Just another rock? Or maybe, just maybe, it's something else. This was my extraordinary experience in Montana's Badlands, the summer of 1989, when I discovered my first dinosaur bone. Hi, I'm DJ Kristoff, author and award-winning science educator, digging dinosaurs at the excavation site of Jurassic Park's paleontologist, not only inspired my innovative way of teaching, it sparked my passion for adventure that has taken me all over the world, from backpacking and whitewater rafting through the Grand Canyon, riding camels around the pyramids of Egypt, exploring the tombs of the pharaohs, to hot air ballooning over the Masai Mara in Tanzania, looking down over a herd of elephants, I've used these experiences to inspire my students to become courageous adventurers, growing in confidence, self-reliance, and resilience. So let's travel back in time to how I earned my nickname, Dino Diane. I was teaching science in Arizona when the movie Jurassic Park came out, and I fell in love with those dinosaurs. I learned that the main character, Dr. Alan Grant, was actually inspired by a real paleontologist named Jack Horner. Now, my father, who has always been very supportive of me, found an ad in the back of a National Geographic inviting people to come dig dinosaurs at Horner's excavation site. Jack called it Campasaur. So I packed my backpack and I went digging for dinosaurs. A journalist visiting the site one hot afternoon heard all this commotion coming from the far end of the dig. I had just uncovered a Mayosaurus femur. That's a thigh bone of a dinosaur. Can you imagine? A shudder cursed through my entire body as I realized that this Mayosaurus didn't know it at the time, but we would be meeting like this nearly 80 million years later. When the journalist asked me what my name was for his article, a code digger blurted out, why, that's Dino Diane, and the name stuck, and it became the nickname of my main character and the title of my book series, Dino Diane's Adventures. So what did I learn in those badlands in Montana? Well, growing up, dinosaurs were always portrayed as dim-witted, slow-moving loners, but under a starry night sky by the glow of a smoky campfire. I learned that the fossil evidence indicated that dinosaurs were more like fast-moving, warm-blooded animals than slow, cold-blooded reptiles, and that some were actually graceful, social creatures, with many species traveling in gigantic herds. Paleontologists know this by the many dinosaur trackways found all over the world. Those are footprints embedded in stone, all belonging to the same dinosaur species. Jack Horner discovered this fact in a very different way. The bone bed, that's the layer of rock containing the fossil bones that I was digging in, was found to be the buried tomb of approximately 10,000 dinosaurs. In the Camposaur site alone, the pit yielded over 4,500 bone fragments from about 27 individuals. These individuals included juveniles, or the young, along with the adults, all of the same species of a plant-eating dinosaur, a new species of herbivore Horner named Mayosaura. But more than that, Horner had uncovered the fossil remains of an entire herd. The Mayosaura is the only female named dinosaur to date. It means good mother lizard, as she exhibited maternal instincts like making nests and caring for her young. How does Horner know this? Why the tiny eggshell fragments found in the first dinosaur nest ever discovered containing fossilized baby dinosaurs up to a month or two in age. 
telling us that the hatchlings stayed in their nest while being fed by their mother. Other dinosaur nests were found at the nearby Egg Mountain site. Here under Montana's big sky with an ice pick and whisk broom in hand, I thrilled at the discovery of a dinosaur egg along with numerous eggshell fragments. It was at times tedious, tiresome work, oh, but I felt like I was at the top of the world with dinosaur delirium. As I stood on Egg Mountain, looking down over the Badlands, I couldn't help but wonder, how did so many dinosaurs come to die here? This was a great dinosaur mystery. After years of studying not only the black crumbly fossils, but the geology in the area as well, Horner and his crew of scientists have finally proposed a theory. Imagine a large volcano in the Rockies suddenly erupts, spewing poisonous gas and hot volcanic ash into the air, turning the grazing grounds of the herd of unsuspecting Mayasaura into a choking, killing field. Over time, the stench, flies, and beetles would all disappear from the rotting corpses, leaving only sun-bleached bones to be swept away by a muddy flood so catastrophic that it picked up and carried all the bones in a slurry of fossil soup to a new location, settling now beneath my feet. Jack Horner, his dinosaur discoveries, theories, and adventures were a profound influence in my life, inspiring me to become an award-winning teacher. Now it is my hope to have a similar positive impact on today's youth, inspiring a love for learning science through adventures in nature. Since then, I check in on Horner from time to time to see what he's been up to in the dinosaur world. Jack is now in his mid-70s and still quite active. I learned that he has been investigating the real possibility of bringing dinosaurs back to Earth, as suggested in the movie. But after many attempts, he's discovered you can't clone a dinosaur with DNA from the blood of a mosquito preserved in amber. Apparently, he says, all you get is a swarm of mosquitoes and, well, maybe a few trees but you may be able to genetically engineer a chicken into a chickenosaurus. Imagine a chicken with teeth, a long tail, and three-fingered hands instead of wings, like a velociraptor. Now, that's a chickenosaurus. Chickens are dinosaurs. Did you know that? In fact, all birds are actually dinosaurs. Today, they are scientifically classified as avian dinosaurs. So the next time you order Chicken McNuggets, know that you're actually eating dinosaur McNuggets. My dinosaur digging experience inspired a new way of teaching, which I call learning through adventure. I recreated a dinosaur dig in my classroom using copy paper boxes, digging tools, and wooden dinosaur skeletons. With the slides of my actual dig flashing on the classroom wall, I created an exciting atmosphere that engaged my students' imagination and made learning an adventure. So come along with me now on a magical adventure, and together, let's encourage our youth to strap on their hiking boots and inspire a joy for learning through adventures in nature. I sincerely thank you for taking your time with me, and I'm looking forward to digging with you. I enjoyed DJ's presentation because it taught me a lot of things about dinosaurs that I never knew. For instance, when I go to McDonald's next time, I'm gonna be really wondering, am I having a dinosaur McNugget instead of a chicken McNugget, as DJ pointed out in her presentation. DJ Kristoff reawakened my childhood dream of being an archaeologist. I have always loved learning about bones and digging and history, and I had no idea that dinosaurs were so social and that they traveled in groups. I would love to be in DJ's classroom, and I'm getting her book for my grandkids. 
I so enjoyed listening to Dino Diane. And for a subject I didn't know very much about, I found I was getting kind of excited about dinosaurs. And I learned that birds are actually dinosaurs. So this weekend, when I'm babysitting my niece and I take her out for a walk, when she starts digging in the dirt, I'm just gonna let her do it. <laughs>